In this video, we're going to look at the Linear Pattern Tool, which is part of FreeCAD's Part Design Workbench. Stick around. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm here to help you learn FreeCAD so you can design the things that you've imagined. The Linear Pattern Tool allows you to create one or more copies of a feature over a set distance along a straight line. It's useful for designing the shelf pin holes in and say the side of a bookcase. I've created the models ahead of time so we can concentrate on the tool itself and not creating the models. Now let's get started. I'm using FreeCAD version 0.19 built on the 15th of April 2021 for this demonstration and I'm using Kubuntu Linux version 20.04 LTS. So the first example we're going to look at is of a pillar on a base plate. I'm just going to make three or four copies of that. We select a pad and we start the linear pattern tool. You'll note there is an error because it is trying to create the linear pattern to the right of the pillar. So we're just going to reverse the direction firstly, and that will bring it back into the base plate. And the reason that there is an error is because you can only have one solid within a part design model. That's a limitation of the part design workbench. Maybe it's a feature. I'll let you decide which one it is. If we enable the reverse direction checkbox, you'll see that it reverses the direction and brings the pillar back onto the base plate. It has a distance of 100 millimeters and by default, and we're using only two pillars, so the first and the last. If I increase the number of pillars, what you'll find is that the gap between them is equidistant. Now, again, if I turn off reverse direction, we will get an invalid transformation because there is now more than one solid, even though three of those pillars are still on the base plate. Similarly, if I make the length longer than the base plate, which itself is 200 millimeters, you'll see that the transformation has failed again because it's got at least one of the copies outside the base plate, we have two solids again. So you can see that you need to make sure that your linear pattern fits within the solid that you are building it upon. You can specify the direction of the linear pattern using the direction option. In this case, it's chosen the horizontal sketch axis. And obviously we've got an error because it is putting the second one outside the base plate. So if I fix that just by making it reversed, and then what we'll do is we'll change the direction to be the normal sketch axis. And you can see that it has created another pillar, but it's off the base plate. So we've got two solids, therefore it can't do it. Similarly, if the in the vertical sketch axis, it moves around and again creates a, a problem for us because there's two solids. So you can change this to suit your needs. Some of the options will work, some won't, because depending on which direction you're making the polar pattern go along, you will find that you'll get one or more solids. We've looked at creating a linear pattern based on an additive feature. Let's have a look at one based on a subtractive feature as well. So with this example, I've just got a simple hole in the base plate. We select the hole and then start the linear pattern tool. Again, you can see that it's created two copies of it. We increase the number of occurrences. Again, it will make them equidistant over that distance or the length here. So if we set the length to be greater than the length of the base plate, you don't get an error. And the reason for that is you're actually not creating another solid. You are simply copying a hole into, into space. And so nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So there is no extra solid created. Similarly, if you change the sketch axis that it's moving it along, it makes no difference either. Now let's try it with a slightly more complex pillar. This one is basically a cylinder with a fillet cut in the top. So if I select a fillet, and then start the polar pattern tool, it doesn't seem to make any difference what sort of settings I choose. And the reason for this, I think, is because it's creating the linear pattern on the pillar itself. So as you can see, once we got to the Z axis direction, if I zoom in, you can see there's another fillet being created at the bottom. So what I was actually tr wanting to do was take this pillar with a fillet on it and create a linear pattern on the baseboard. The software is doing the right thing. I'm just giving it the wrong instructions. So in order to achieve a row of pillars with a fillet on the top, what I need to do is actually create the pillar with an integral fillet in it. So if we have a look at this pillar here, you can see in the sketch that I've created it with the fillet in there. So we don't have to to use FreeCAD to create the fillet. And then what we do is we just use the polar pattern tool as normal. 
We set the reverse direction. We can increase the number of pillars and the length of the, that they are over, etc. And you can see that it's got a pillar with a fillet on top. Again, if we're changing the sketch axis, we get different results. And in this case, because we're going vertical and the heights allow them to overlap, we get only two solids. But if we were to increase the length over which they are created, you'll see that now it's created multiple solids. So depending on what you're doing, again, you get different results. Like the polar pattern tool, the linear pattern tool only works with additive or subtractive features. So in this particular example, I've created a base plate as a body and then created a second body, which is just a solid. And then I've cut the solid from the base plate using the Boolean operation. So when I choose the Boolean and try to create a linear pattern from it, immediately I get an error saying only additive and subtractive features can be transformed. So you can't use more complex features like Booleans and so on like that in this tool either. So a practical example example of this tool would be to create a row of shelf pin holes in the cabinet side. So to create the rows of shelf pin holes, firstly you would create the holes themselves and then you would just use the linear pattern tool and we will create say eight rows of holes over 100 millimeters. It's not a particularly good example in this case because the shelves are close together but I think you see the point. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Click the like button if you'd like to see more content like this. I'm really grateful for the support I've received on the channel, so please consider subscribing to the channel as it will help me out. Also, if you'd like to support the channel by buying me a cup of coffee, there's a link where you can do so in the description below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.